my name is Eileen Perez. I'm an astrophysicist, and this is What Size of Stars Have Relatively Short Lifespans? So when you think about it, you should think about it in terms of like a car. Uh, if you have a bus and you have a Mini Cooper, if you fill both of them with 10 gallons of gasoline, the bus is going to run out of gas a lot faster than the Mini Cooper. And this is exactly what's happening with the stars. So the stars have to use the energy that they have provided, so their mass, and they're outputting power through the energy of fusion. So this conversion of energy through fusion is actually using their mass. Eventually they're going to run out of energy to keep powering themselves, and that's when the star dies. So the ones that use their fuel a lot faster tend to die a lot quicker, so more massive stars die faster. Um, a good way to look at this is using the HR diagram. The first axis of the HR diagram is the spectral classes. It can also be looked at in terms of temperature. So over here you have the really hot blue stars. These are the OB class, and these are around 30,000 degrees Kelvin. And then when you go to the other end of the, of the axis, you have the colder stars, the K, the Ms, and this is about 3,000 degrees Kelvin. Just as a reference, our sun is a G-class star, it's a G2, and it's somewhere around here. We're a yellow star. So now if we look at it, this side is how much power we're outputting, so the luminosity, how bright we are. So when you look at this graph, the sun corresponds to one solar luminosity, so it makes sense because we use it as in, in terms of how much more luminous uh, they are than the sun. So over here you have stars that are 10,000 times more luminous than the sun and so forth. So the stars that, that are on this side spend a lot of their fuel a lot faster because they're bigger, they need a lot more energy to power themselves, they're a lot brighter, they're a lot bigger, they're a lot hotter. So a good way to look at this is that the life expectancy should go as the energy divided by the power, right? So you have a certain, a, a finite amount of energy and you're outputting a certain amount of power. The power is how fast you are consuming that energy, right? So the time would be when you have consumed all the energy. And a good way to look at this in terms of stars, it will be to compare it to the sun. So it will be something like the mass divided by the luminosity. So if you have the the life expectancy of a star divided by the life expectancy of the sun, you can look at this in terms of the mass of the star divided by the luminosity of the star. So now, uh, if you look at something, like the life expectancy of the sun is 10 to the 9 years. So if we were to actually use this, let's say we look at a star, let's say the mass of the star is 10 times the mass of the sun. And the luminosity is 10 to the fourth of the solar luminosity. This is a really bright star, very blue, is around this area, so it's probably like a B class. And this is just for demonstration purposes. If you plug in your T star, and then you plug in 10 M divided by 10 to the fourth luminosity of the star, and then multiply by 10 to the 9 years, you actually end up that this star is going to live 10 to the 6 years. So instead of 10 billion years, you're going to have 10 million years. So you see, as you actually get bigger and more luminous, your life expectancy will actually drop. My name is Eileen Perez. I'm an astrophysicist, and this is what size of stars are rel have relative short lifespans.